The pursuit of strength is not a foreign concept in Battle Shonen. Some of the most popular characters in anime largely strive for power in the pursuit of their more overarching goals. Naruto needs strength to become the Hokage, Luffy to become the Pirate King, and Ichigo to protect his loved ones. Even Goku, one of the most iconic characters ever, literally exists to get stronger and grow as a martial artist. And while every single one of these series handles strength in the pursuit of it very differently, there is one manga in particular that has handled this theme beautifully and recontextualized my notion of what strength is altogether. Yuji Kaku's Hell's Paradise is this very manga. Hell's Paradise is a manga with an anime that just started airing a few weeks ago, following the story of Gabimaru and his journey to get pardoned from his crimes and get back to his wife that he loves so dearly. This story immediately takes a turn for the extreme, as the requirements of getting pardoned for his crimes dictate that he must go to an island that no human has ever returned from alive. And on top of this, he must retrieve an elixir of life that may not even exist. The story of Hell's Paradise is one that is really simple on the surface, and well, even after digging into the series really deeply, this manga has a plot that I would consider relatively simple. This simplicity allows for the small cast to be explored and developed very deeply, and one of the many aspects of these characters that grow so much is their relationship with strength conceptually and practically. In the very beginning of the story, we as the audience are led to believe that Gabimaru is this cold-hearted, unshakable, unfeeling killer who was on the chopping block because of how wicked he was as a ninja. And while his murderous deeds can't be excused as good or just, what isn't true is that he is a hard heartless monster. What isn't true is that he is hollow. As he admits himself, if he was hollow, he would have simply rolled over and given up on his life. If he was hollow, he would have allowed himself to be executed and passed on to the next life with no regrets or remorse. If he was hollow, he wouldn't have ran for his life as soon as Sagiri went to cut off his head. But as you and I both know, he couldn't do that, specifically because of his wife, a connection that he considered a weakness because of his upbringing in such a toxic environment. But in reality, it was that one connection that allowed Gabimaru to survive when all other objective purpose was lost. And for this reason, I think the first chapter and episode of the series lay a pretty solid foundation as to what real strength will look like in Hell's Paradise. Yuji Kaku continues to hit you over the head with his messaging as we are introduced to and familiarized with Sigiri and her story. As a member of the Asaimon clan, she is an expert swordsman and beheader. Normally, this would be a perfectly fine line of work for her to be in, but there are two major roadblocks that stand in her way when it comes to fully accepting who she is and what she does. The first thing is that she's a woman, and she is reminded of this supposed weakness numerous times within the opening chapters of this story. Not only do criminals target her specifically because of her womanhood, but even her fellow Asaimon deem her to be inferior or misplaced in this line of work because she is a she. This problem by itself would already be troublesome for Sigiri to overcome, especially during the time period that this story takes place in, but her gender and how that plays into her perception of herself is coupled with the fact that she does not enjoy killing. In fact, she downright fears it. Now, just like her being a woman, fearing and having a distaste for killing is not only normal, it's completely fine. While she doesn't feel this way at the start of the series, neither of these two things need to be fixed. Her disdain for taking a life is okay, and her being a woman in the Asaimon clan is also obviously okay, but these two things are viewed both by her and a majority of the people around her as a weakness. Rather than eliminate any trace of these two weaknesses though, the story frames these two things as aspects of herself that she needs to learn to accept. Take for example her dislike of killing. In chapter 2 of the manga, this very thing is addressed by Gabimaru, a killer who put up wilt numbers during his time as a ninja, and someone that by anyone's standards could be considered 
evil. When forced to kill to get a spot on the Elixir of Life journey, unlike many of the other criminals, we see that he does not rush to kill or hurt anyone, and in fact, complains about the fact that he has to, establishing not only his slightly sassy personality, but also the fact that even as a killer, he doesn't enjoy or relish in what he is doing. In his words, when it's kill or be killed, he'll kill. But in spite of that, Gabimaru says very plainly that killing people unnecessarily is not a normal thing to enjoy doing. And before tearing through some of the criminals in order to preserve his life and get that pardon, he even whines about the burden he is about to bear by taking a life. A phrase that strikes a chord with Zagiri and her own qualms with her profession. Covered in the filth of death and destruction, Gabimaru walks showing Sagiri that she didn't need to eliminate that fear. She didn't need to remove the weight of a human life. But what she did need to do is prepare herself to feel that fear, hold that weight, and still perform her task anyway. Now, you've likely heard this before, but in order to be courageous, you have to actually be scared first. Many people often think that the bravest or most courageous people aren't scared and that they have no fear, but doing something without either of those things doesn't make you courageous, and oftentimes it can mean that you're stupid. Courage requires you to be scared. Sometimes it requires you to be terrified and act anyway. And this fact was only able to be realized by Sigiri after seeing Gabimaru employ that mentality firsthand. Being strong in this instance wouldn't be not caring about humans. Being strong wouldn't mean not caring about taking a life. But being strong would mean that you can do all of those things. You can have all of those negative experiences and feelings and continue moving forward anyway. Once again, within the very first few chapters and episodes of the story, the concept of strength in Hell's Paradise is establishing itself, making itself present for the audience so that when things really get crazy, when shit really starts to hit the fan, it all ties together. This relatively small arc of revealing the first layer of strength in this series comes to a head in chapter 5 of the manga, when Sigiri and Gabimaru initially come to blows, and it's clear that neither of the two are able to exert all of their power. Gabimaru because of his disdain towards killing and slight fondness towards Sigiri, and Sigiri because something about Gabimaru has convinced her that he isn't pure evil. Both characters, while fighting for their lives, are in the midst of dealing with a mental battle, and they both at some point in this fight consider their emotions a burden. Even when Gabimaru tries to turn off his emotions and return to the hollow man he was before and slay Sigiri, we see that he is unable to. The training and indoctrination that he received as an Iwagakure shinobi is strong, but even stronger is his wife's love and affection for him. Holding him back is the love of a woman who in the very beginning of the story, he pretended didn't exist. Holding him back is his humanity. Sigiri recognizes this very humanity and recognizes these emotions of his as a type of strength, one that should under no circumstances be discarded. Once again, acceptance, emotion, humanity, all of these things are referred to as a type of strength in this story, in spite of their weak connotation. The doubts that come with being human shouldn't be ignored or discarded just because they are unsightly or inconvenient. Because if we discard those aspects of ourselves, if we lock them up and bury them as deeply inside of us as possible, not only do we lose an aspect of ourselves that make us human, but we also are only weakening our ability to deal with emotionally taxing things when the time arises. Because unless you are someone like a sociopath, who literally does not process emotions in the same way that most people do, no matter how hard you try to become this emotionless, cold-hearted, edgy person, you have feelings, you have emotion, and you have vulnerabilities. And I'm not saying this as someone who's had an easy time coming to grips with this myself. I'm someone who has historically been very closed off with people emotionally out of fear of being perceived as weak or even actually being weak myself for doing that. Trust me, I understand with firsthand experience that being vulnerable emotionally is very difficult to do. It's why being able to do it makes you so strong. Now, I'm not saying you have to or should cry when things don't go your way. I'm not saying you should throw a temper tantrum because you are angry. I'm not saying that every time you feel an emotion, you need to have an outburst. The story of Hell's Paradise isn't saying that either. 
But what I am saying, what this series is saying, is that we all have limits on how much we can restrict our emotions. We all have limits on how much we can bottle up. Maybe your threshold for it is higher than mine. Maybe it's lower, or maybe it's gotten to the point where you don't even know how to express what you are feeling. And I understand that. But what I will say is that deciding to not feel is the weakest answer to any of those problems. When Gabi Maru ignored the love of his life and tried to pretend he was this hollow, heartless monster, guess what? He was at his weakest, not only mentally, but physically. That cold-hearted killer, that guy who couldn't give a damn about anything in his life, that Gabi Maru is weaker than every other emotionally intelligent version of that character in the series. A Gabi Maru who is willing to be emotionally vulnerable will kick chapter one Gabi Maru's ass and it's because he is truly understanding what being strong requires. Hell's Paradise is a story that asks its characters to emotionally exercise and open themselves up to weakness so that strength can bloom. And this is something that we can realistically apply to our day to day, even in a physical, tangible sense. For example, let's say you're trying to beef up, right? If you want to be physically strong, you have to exercise, right? Well, what is exercising if not literally breaking down your body through effort and strain and then recovering to become stronger than you were before? From a scientific standpoint, that is literally the only way to get stronger. Break down, come apart, and then recover. You have to continuously repeat that cycle of breaking down and recovering in order to get stronger. You have to flex those muscles and strain yourself in order to gain more. In order to lift more weight, you don't completely ignore your muscles. You don't shut off your body from any sort of strain and hope that it magically becomes stronger. So why would you completely suppress and ignore your emotions to become a more emotionally strong person? Hell's Paradise, to me, is a story asking and answering that very question. It is asking about what true strength is and time and time and time again, the answer that comes back is that vulnerability is a massive part of it. It's not the only component, mind you. In fact, the story really harps on the idea of the middle way in finding a balance between both extremes. But many people already know how to be intense. Many people know how to be physically strong, how to assert themselves, or how to be aggressive. But I would argue that not as many know how to empathize with themselves and accept their flaws and continue existing with them proudly. Maybe you are a little emotional relative to your peers. Maybe you are a little bit soft compared to what society says you should be. But what does that mean? Truly, what does that mean? What is the answer for you there? And I feel like Hell's Paradise answers it in such a poignant way. For Sagiri, she was able to overcome her supposed weakness as a woman in her profession by understanding that she truly aims to stand in the middle of it all. Man and woman, weakness and strength, emotionality and rationality. These supposed contradicting ideals exist within Sagiri. They exist within you, but when she is able to make the conscious decision to accept that fact and use it, when she is able to decide that she is not wholly emotional or wholly logical, and when she realizes that logic is not the only good thing and that emotion isn't bad, that's when she surpasses Gabi Maru as a fighter and makes herself known as a member of the Asaimon clan, peerless in her sword skill. It's a continuous journey for her to truly master the middle way. It's something that takes her 127 chapters of the story, just as it is for every character in the series, just as it is for people in real life. But I think Sagiri very early on finds her footing in this path and remains strong because of it. Now, in a little bit, if you're an anime only, you'll be introduced to a character who proposes a equation of sorts. Strong plus strong is not good. Weak plus weak is not good. But strong plus weak though, that's a good combination. And while anime onlys may not understand the full significance of that yet, keep watching and you will soon enough. Hell's Paradise is a story about strength. And because of that fact, it's a story about weakness as well. So if I had to explain how exactly this story can make you stronger in a sentence, well, I think I'd say that Hell's Paradise makes you stronger because it encourages you to be weaker.